Hello, welcome to SDI 7 HIT Safety Prevention and Awareness Program. Today's objective is to take you through the basic strikes of SDI 7. So these are the strikes that are extremely effective in a street situation. So I'm going to take you through each one. I would advise you to practice them slowly and then you can also uh, incorporate them or implement them into your workouts as a warm up or a cool down, focusing more on the movement and the technique, where you're striking and what your body is doing. So we're going to start with the headbutt. So I'm in a neutral stance here. So a neutral stance is a square stance and in the mindset zones, uh, neutral is the gray state where we're maintaining our focus, we're assessing the situation before we go into our green mindset zone, which is fight mode, which is go. So we're going to go into the, the headbutt first. So the three target areas mainly are the eyes, the nose, and the groin. Those are the target areas that you want to focus on that are most vulnerable and can potentially get you out of that situation quickly. So the first is a headbutt. This is from close quarters. So we're just going to walk through this uh, 10 times each technique so you can implement what you choose into your own training, whether it's at home or into your gym workouts, and then working them into your SDI 7 hit uh, interval. Okay, so the headbutt, we're going to step forward with our left foot, we're dropping our head back, and then we're lunging forward with the top of our head. So this is the headbutt, and you're going to the bridge of the nose. Okay, so I just want you to step forward with your left foot, drop your chin to your chest, the top of your head is dropping onto the bridge of the nose. Five, four, three, two, one. Now there's the reverse headbutt or if someone is behind you. So now someone has you in a bear hug or suddenly grabbed you from behind and you know that they're directly behind you, you're going to just step back and do the reverse. So we're, we're stepping back or depending on how close they are, they could be close range where they have you in the bear hug position. So we're dropping our chin to our, to our chest this time and we're just dropping our head straight back. We're driving it straight back, attempting to strike them on the bridge of the nose with the back of your head. It's a very powerful strike, so let's do this for seven more times. Just again, just getting your body used to the motion. Five, four, and it's good to practice with your hands up or in the position of where you're going. Three, two, one. Okay, so that is the headbutt. Okay, now we're going to work our way down and again that is uh, mainly going to the bridge of the nose area here or the nose right to the, the face. What we're going to do next is the open hand strike. This strike is going to the throat and you're going to just strike. So this could be a punch or it could be an open hand strike. Uh, the, the main strikes that I encourage you to use, uh, the main target areas, are the eyes, the nose, and the groin. That's, that's first. Uh, but if you have the opportunity for the throat, uh, it's a very effective strike. So you're stepping in here just like you were to throw that palm strike, but you're just striking to the throat. So again, either hand can be used. We're just striking straight out to the throat. And again, if this is a warm-up in your workouts, you just start to move a little bit quicker. For five more times. Four, three, two, one, and then if you want to go to the other side, it's the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's the throat strike. Obviously going to the throat. Okay, again, that could be the open hand throat strike. It could also be a punch. The next is the spear hand strike with your fingers. Again, eyes, nose, groin. So if you've ever been uh, struck in the eye or a, a fly or a mosquito uh, got in your eye, you know that causes that reaction. That's what you want to set them up ultimately for the next uh, technique. So from here, we're going to start again 
from the neutral stance. This is square stance. Again, I want you to think of neutral as gray because that's the state you want to be in. You want to avoid the mindset zone of red, paralyzed by fear. Yellow, overcome by fear, where you're just haphazardly throwing punches and you're not having a clear mind on those, those objective target areas, the eyes, the nose, and the groin. So from here, we're going to have our hands up and we're just striking straight out to the eyes. Fingers are together. And again, this is really just a quick flick of the hand. And again, I'm in my square stance. So let's take this for a few more repetitions. And again, just use it as a warm up in the beginning. And ultimately, you're gonna turn these into combinations. Four, three, two, and one. Awesome, okay. Next up is the palm strike. So, so far you have the spear hand to the eyes, throw strike, open hand throw strike to the throat. The palm is going to the nose. So we can step in or we could just be from this neutral stance, just rotate our hips. So again, from close quarters, if that person's a little distance between you and the attacker, you could always step in. So we're just gonna use that neutral stance, that square stance. Our hands are up, we're gonna alternate hands, just straight out, one. And again, you wanna get in the habit of hands up, so if you are in that uh, attack situation, you're, you're protecting yourself. Straight up, and visualize the target area that you're striking. So right now, I want you to try to put yourself in the mindset, although we're not going through this in at full speed, but I want you to visualize the person in front of you and you're striking to that target, the nose. A few more times. Okay, great. Now we're gonna move on to the thumb gouge. Very effective strike. This can be used in a couple of different scenarios. Uh, what you're doing first is a thumb gouge where you're grabbing the person's head and you're pressing applying the pressure on your thumbs into the eye socket and you are squeezing and you are applying that pressure. A tremendous, it's a tremendous uh, effective strike. You're holding, you're grabbing, you're squeezing. The other one is a quick thumb strike. So from here, again, you could step in or you're from this position, you're just taking your thumbs and going right to the eye. So this could be used in a choke hold, coming up between the person's arms, as they're choking you from this position, just straight out. A few more times. Again, you, all the objective here is you just want to visualize yourself in the situation and where you are striking to. I cannot emphasize uh, enough the importance of visualize what you're doing, putting yourself in the state of the attack and where you're striking. The thumb gouge. Again, the gouge, you're, you're, that's more of the strike. The gouge, you're grabbing the head, you're applying the pressure to the eye socket and pressing the thumbs deep and hard into the eye socket. So that's your thumb gouge. We're gonna move on to the elbows, very, very effective. The elbows can be used across the jaw, can be used into the nose area. So we're going to show you a couple of different uh, elbow strikes. So first, it's the whipping elbow. Again, we're just gonna be from this position just to get your body used to the motion of the elbow strike. Just like throwing a punch, you're whipping your hips around, you're coming across, and again, I want that elbow just to come slightly across, and you can come further, but right about there for now, and then you're gonna come the other way. So you're just whipping your elbow around. This would be a whipping elbow strike. And as you understand the movement of your body, you just start to progress to where you're moving quicker. And then you really get the mindset of the green state, which is go, where it's faster. And of course, your repetition is going to turn into a reaction or a reflex. So if faced in that situation, you will know what to do immediately. So that's the, the whipping elbow strikes. The direct elbow strike, okay, from the 
this neutral stance. We're going to step up with our right foot. We're coming across with the whipping elbow first. Now you just struck once, so your elbow is right here. Now we're coming straight back into the nose area with the elbow. So I don't want you to whip the elbow back this way. I want you to try to drive that elbow straight in, straight into the nose. So from here, we're going to go right then left, whipping elbow, direct elbow. Whipping elbow, direct elbow. So it's one, so you have two strikes here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, ten. So that is your whipping elbow into a direct elbow. The elbows, of course, can also be used if someone's attacking you from behind. I'll go over that in a minute. But first, I want to show you one very effective strike. So if the attacker has you and you happen to get your back in this position or you're slightly turned, all you're going to do is step back with that foot. So here, I'm in a boxer's stance. You're in the confrontation. You're doing a 180, I want you to step back with that, I want you to step up with that back foot and you drive that elbow straight in, straight back, and then just pull that right foot back to the boxer's stance. Again, it's a spin, it's a 180, and elbow straight back. Now notice this, my other hand is up, just in case to protect my face. And again, you just want to do this slowly, understand the movement of the body and what you're doing. One pivot, step back, and strike. And back to a boxer's or a, a neutral stance. Pivot, direct elbow, and back. Five more times, five, pivot, four, three, two, And one. Okay, so now we're going to go to the elbows as if the person were behind us, grabbed us, had us in a bear hug. So we're going to start with the elbows. First, you can swing your pivot, your hips around. You go into the rib area here. You just keep driving that elbow into the ribs. So we're going to go right side, left side. And then we're going to go to the next elbow. So here you're going low, the person's behind you, so right in the rib area there. It's one, and this is your movement that you implement in your workouts. Straight in, driving that elbow into the ribs. Driving the elbow into the ribs. From here, there's a rising elbow strike, so here you're just picking your elbow straight up, and this you can catch them underneath the chin. So from here, you're coming straight up underneath the chin. So we're just going to start with our right side here. Uh, your left hand is up, protecting your face. So you're coming up, driving that elbow straight up, underneath the chin. Okay, the other side, other hand, one hand up by the face, the other hand is down. You're coming straight up. Visualize yourself coming underneath the chin of the attacker. Okay, now the next strike is you're just whipping around with the elbow. So from here, so again, you can go here and then you can come back up. So it's a strike to the ribs and then you come back up. But just remember, keep throwing those elbows. You want to connect, you want to catch the nose, you get a good strike to the nose. Most likely, that grip weakens, you have the opportunity to escape. So from here, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll go to the other side, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, great job. So those are the elbows, very effective and brutal and lethal. So practice those elbow strikes. Now, when a person grabs you, you want to get their grip, especially if they're a lot stronger, more powerful, which most likely they will be, because they look for, for more vulnerable targets, which appear to be uh, weaker or not as strong, and that would not resist. That's a, a big factor when attackers are looking for victims. So again, going back to prevention, always confident, presenting strong body language, and a uh, don't mess with me attitude. Here, person behind you, bear hug, grabbing you. Now, instead of just screaming, you have to maintain gray state, which is neutral, assess, quickly assess, go green, which is fight. Here, okay, first I would suggest, this is before your elbow, so you can use the elbows, but after you do that, you can also attempt the heel stomp. You're driving your heel into the top part of the foot. There's very small bones on the top, top part of the foot. So when you're stomping your heel onto the top part of the foot, it hurts. So from here, the movement is just a heel stomp. Heel stomp. You're driving your heel into the top part of their foot. So it's just a movement. You just want to take this through the movements, the heel stomp. Person's behind you, directly behind you. Uh, again, a most vulnerable target area is the groin, where you get a good strike there, and most likely you're gonna have an opportunity to escape. So you wanna expose the groin. So the person behind you, if you do a slight hip rotation, more than likely, you have a, have a, 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 a area to hit the groin, to strike the groin. So if you pivot your hips, this is called a hammer fist strike. You're just coming straight down with your fist, striking to that groin. And again, if you don't hit the first time, you're just striking that groin. It's going to take one good solid shot, which can get that grip to weaken and give you the opportunity to escape. So from here, striking down with the hammer fist. Other side, again, you know, could be that uh, more. Uh, part of their body is exposed on one side, so you'll know that. So again, this is awareness, this is that neutral state, assess. From here, hammer fist strike. You're taking that hand, striking down. If you don't strike once, you strike again. So you're, you can go back to those heel stomps, elbows, he, elbows, heel stomp, hammer fist. Once you get the movements down, and you are actually visualizing yourself in this situation, that's what you're doing, one right after another. So you have the hammer fist and the heel strike. So there, a typical combination could be this, it could be the heel stomp, it could be hammer fist, it could be elbow. It could be hammer fist, heel stomp, elbow. But one right after another, one right after another until you feel a grip loosen or weaken and you can run or escape the situation. We are now moving to the lower body to our kicks. So from here, there's two basic things that we do, uh, which are very basic but very effective. There is the front snap kick, uh, known in karate, it could be a snap kick or a ball kick. We're going to just uh, get in the habit of pointing our toes straight ahead. What we're doing is we just want to come right underneath uh, the groin and striking upward with full force. So from here, a simple way to practice this is you just pick your left foot up, Kick straight out, right foot up, left foot, right foot, back and forth. Just get yourself in this groin area. So that's where you're, you're striking. I'm going to explain what happens after the groin strike. So again, the front kick. Now, when you kick, each one of these strikes will create a reaction. So if you hit the target area, that's going to initiate that's going to, you're going to get a response. 
So an example would be strike to the eyes, hands can go up, exposing the groin. In this situation, you kick to the groin, it connects, upper body keels over of the attacker, putting them in position for the knee kick. So from here, you're just picking that knee straight up. Okay, so here, I just want you to get in the habit of just pick your knee up for now, especially if you're just starting out, of course. If you're an advanced, uh, if your level of fitness is more advanced and you think you have these movements down, you're moving through, through these movements a lot quicker. So another way to add on to that would be front snap kick, knee kick, front snap kick, knee kick, going back and forth. Okay, so those are your strikes. Now that's a, once you get those strikes down, that could be a great warm up, it could be a great cool down, it could be a great workout, implementing combinations, taking three or four of those techniques, customizing it into your own combination, then going to an interval to where you are going all out for 60 seconds, and that's the SDI 7 hit. So example would be, you take the palm strike, the front snap kick, and the knee kick. You do that as a combination. You do it slow, palm strike, front snap kick, knee kick. Palm strike, front snap kick, knee kick. You're getting your mind to see yourself doing the movement, your body is understanding the movement, and then you can progress and move quicker. So 60 seconds on that, that's the fighting skill and then you would go 60 seconds on an exercise. Again, you can modify those dependent upon your fitness level. It could be squat jumps, it could be sprawls, it could be a strength movement, but we give you a whole list, beginner through advanced, on which exercises to choose from. So those are your basic, real, street techniques that are extremely effective. I'm gonna move on to the, the boxing skills now. So once you are comfortable or confident with that, Many people go to boxing classes, kickboxing classes, especially cardio. I'm gonna take a few minutes to go over the punches. Now in boxing, the punches combinations are numbered, so I'm gonna go over the numbers and the name of the punch that we're throwing. So here, we are in a boxer stance. Hands are up, front foot is slightly pointed forward, elbows are in, and again, depending upon your fitness level or your skill of boxing, of course, you know where you're at. This is my chosen stance for boxing. Elbows are in tight. Now we're going to start with the jab. Let's just do that 10 times. Now notice the hip rotation on my front, my front part of my body. My hip slightly turns clockwise. I'm throwing the jab. Now if you're a southpaw, your right hand is in front. Five more times. Again, this is the jab. So freeze your position for a moment and check yourself out. So when I say practice the technique and the movement, look at yourself, hands up, protecting yourself, nice and tight, this elbow in tight, and straight back to your face. Five, four, three, two, one. So that is in boxing. That's your number one. Now we're going to go to the number two, which is your cross. From here, this is more of the power punch. So your rear hand is the one that's going to carry more power. Why? More hip rotation, so you have more movement in the lower part of your body. You're going to generate the faster you move that lower body, the more whip that you have, the more power you're going to generate in, in that punch. So this is your cross. Pick a target area out straight in front of you. You know, visualize the nose. You know about your height, you can go up a little higher, but again, punching straight out to that target area. This is more hip rotation here. Now my, my hips are pivoting counterclockwise and straight back. I'm gonna do this for eight more times. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So now if we were to put that together in boxing, the numbers, it's a one, two. So it'll be one, two. So this is something you'll practice on your own, one. But again, at first don't rush the, 
the punches, you know, focus more on the movement of the body, get that hip rotation working, make sure your hands are in the right position. Now we're going to go to our three, our number three, our lead hook. Lead hook is very powerful punch. You're coming around. There's two ways mainly that people like to throw the hook. So one is thumb to the side, the other one is thumb up. I like to have my thumb to the side. So from here, okay, depending on your counter, if you're, you're, you pivot slightly, you're going to have more hip rotation going into the hook. So if I just evaded a punch, I'm coming across with the hook. So take a slight hip rotation, counterclockwise, and then come back with the hook. My arm slightly now, it's almost like you're going to throw an elbow following that. So it's just nice and slow. Four, three, two, one. So now we have the one, two, three. One, two, three. So you can practice that. You can add that to your combination. One, two, three. Now we're going to add the number four, the rear hook punch. So it's one, two, three. Now we're going to go four. We're coming across with that rear hook. Okay, so here, now my body is going to rotate counterclockwise from here. I'm coming around. Again, it's almost like you're whipping that elbow around to come through. So seven, six, arm is pretty much parallel to the ground. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so now we have the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to add our five, our uppercut, lead uppercut. The uppercut, you're coming underneath the jaw, could be to the solar plexus. This right here knocks the wind out of somebody if you get them in the right area. Okay, you go to the ribs, but here, depending upon the distance, we're going to assume you're in tight on this. So all I want you to do is you drop your body slightly, you're coming straight up, almost like you're coming underneath your chin, your arms on a slight angle. So you're coming up, underneath, and then I want you to get in the habit of right back to protect yourself. So it's a drop, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So now we have the one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you can add, you can make your own progressions there, you can mix up your combinations. But again, take your time and understand the movement of the body, your hand position. Okay, so we're going to go to the final uh, uppercut, rear uppercut. Here, again, we're going to come underneath the jaw, you can come straight in more to the solar plex area. Or you can just a quick shuffle, come into the rib, but from here we're dropping, coming underneath. Again, depending on the distance, you might have to step up. This is a little bit more on an angle, or if they're right tight, you're coming more straight up. So that's going to determine that angle right here. So again, we're going to assume this person is tight, dropping, coming underneath. A slight tuck. Now notice a slight bend of my knees. I want to come up with my body. So my power is generated from my lower body, everything coming up at one time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now the final is the overhand. So you have your one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, Six. The final is the overhand. So you're basically coming over, say you're fighting an a, um, orthodox fighter, their right foot is back, you're coming up over the top. So here, that punch is coming straight, up and over, and then down. 